Hey y'all, it's Linda. Welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm gonna be talking about some eyeshadow palettes in my collection because I am doing the eyeshadow palette 5,000 tag. It sounds so dramatic, 5,000, but I genuinely wouldn't be surprised if previous to this, there had been 4,999 eyeshadow palette tags and this happens to be the 5,000th would not shock me. So this video was started by Chic Geek here on YouTube, and I've seen this video done by a ton of my friends here on YouTube, and I was really hesitant to do it. And the reason being because like, not that I didn't enjoy watching it, I love watching this tag. I have watched so many people's tags of this and I find it kind of fascinating because there are definitely some unique questions in here. But since I've been on my low buy, I've also been doing a ton of declutters. I've been paring down my collection to only really keep the stuff that brings me joy. Like I know I even have another declutter coming before the end of the year because I just want to make sure that my collection is something that is just so happy and so joyful to me and something that I'm really getting use out of rather than just sitting there. So I know that a lot of people who do this have like these massive eyeshadow palette collections where they have, you know, 200, 300, 400 eyeshadow palettes that they're choosing from so they're not talking about the same things every time. And, you know, I just, I always want to be cognizant of giving you guys some fresh content and things that you really enjoy. But again, if I'm being honest, my collection is getting far more curated and I kind of love that. So every palette that I'm gonna be talking about today is one that I love in my collection, even though there's a specific question in here, at least one specific question that talks negatively about a palette and I still have it in my collection, but I'm gonna explain all of that. Let's hop into this right now. I'm so excited just to like look through all my palettes. Cause again, like I'm looking at this pile sitting right here and I love all of these eyeshadow palettes so much. So anyway, let's get going. The first question, what is a palette you wore on a special occasion? And I feel like so many people for this are saying, oh, my wedding, oh, you know, my when I graduated high school. Well, guess what? Your girl graduated high school in 1999, okay? I don't remember what makeup I was wearing for that. Your girl got married in 2006. I don't have makeup from 2006, okay? So the palette that I picked actually is the Wild Child palette from ColourPop. The special occasion I wore this to, this was the main palette that I chose to wear when I went on my very first Creators and Friends trip back in May to Charleston. I got to meet so many wonderful creators and to be honest, like, it may sound silly. Yes, I've taken a ton of vacations in my life. I've been very lucky to do that. But this one really gave me the chance to connect with a ton of new people. And it was just an experience that I will never forget. I felt like really alive. I felt really like myself. And this palette is the one that I wore most of the time there, which is interesting because I have some palettes over here that cost like five times what this one cost. But I wore this every single day that I was in Charleston. I did wear other palettes as well, but this is the main one that I wore. So yeah, I would say ColourPop Wild Child. This palette does not get enough love. It is, it is like chef's kiss. What is a palette that you love, but it is repetitive? I did not have to think twice about this. It is the Melt Cosmetics Waiting Room Palette. I feel just by looking at this that you can tell like there are too many shades in that top row that are like exactly alike. There are too many shades in this bottom row. Like these two, there is so little of a difference there. These two, there is so little of a difference there. They don't need to be in the same palette. They don't need to be, but yet <laughs> this is still one of my favorite palettes like in my collection. I love this palette. And when you apply them on your eyes, yes, there are differences. So that's why one of the reasons I kept it. I also kept it because it's Beetlejuice and it's a big collector's thing for me. I love Beetlejuice, but in general, this palette is repetitive as hell, but it's amazing. By the way, I'm gonna link everything that I'm talking about down below. And because a lot of these like this are discontinued, I'm gonna do my best to try to find these for you on various websites like Poshmark because you can find them sometimes. So always look in the links down below. And if I can find more than one, I'll always try to link several so that if one sells out, then you can grab the other. And I also always try to find the people who are not like price gouging to hell because I'm sure there's people charging like 200 bucks for this and that's a no go. A palette that you got your money's worth. I'm sure a lot of you know that this is coming, but it's the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. I hemmed and hawed over buying this thing, okay? I really did because it was 
is $129. No, I think it costs even more now, right? Because Natasha raised the prices, but whatever. This was $129 when I bought it. And at that point, it was the most expensive eyeshadow palette I had ever seen. The most expensive one I've ever purchased. I have used the hell out of this. Can you see how many of these have like a significant dent in them? Like I adore this palette. This is like a sunset warm color lovers absolute dream the quality is brilliant the color story is beautiful so this is one that if you like this color story i always still highly recommend this and i know that out of natasha's palette so people talk about the biba or the glam not too many people talk about this because i know that this is probably considered to be a more bold neutral but I think it is absolutely stunning and I'm so happy I own this. I'm so happy I purchased this. I purchased this full price, no discounts, nothing. And I, I don't regret it for a second. For a palette, that's an amazing deal. So this, keep in mind, is relative, okay? Because for some people, $129 palette is a great deal because the quality is great, everything like that. I do have to admit, my brain went immediately to price. And also, though, I always want to make sure price still lines up with quality because you can pay a dollar for an eyeshadow palette, but if it's complete shite, there's no point in even paying that dollar. This is worth it to me, okay? So this is the e.l.f. Bite Size Hot Jalapeno Palette. You can see I dug my big fat finger in there. I'm so mad, but the color story is cohesive and beautiful. The quality is shockingly amazing, and this is $3. It is $3. $3. I love olive greens and golds together and these kind of grungy tones, and I feel like for a palette that literally fits into the, like, the palm of my hand, like if I was a magician, could I palm this? and be like, be like crazy, like, oh, it's there. No, it's not. I'm not a magician, okay. This is just such a great freaking palette. I know a lot of people have had a lot of luck with the other bite-sized palettes. I think there was like sugar and spice and everything nice, peaches and cream, I don't know, something like that. But whatever, this is the only one that I have that really worked for me. I did buy several others and wound up returning them. This one, the quality is hands down the best. A quad that you love and wish it was a bigger palette. This is this is gonna seem probably a little bit weird, okay? But I still do, I, I'm gonna stand by my opinion, okay? This is the Kaleidos Black Jasmine palette. Now I know that this looks like the most basic bitch smoky eye that you've ever seen, right? Okay, we've got like a taupey gray, we've got an actual gray, we have a black, we have a silver. But if this really, like, it's almost like Melt Cosmetics Mary Jane, like if this was a full palette, but I would love to see some more of these mattes in there, like these beautiful gray cool tone mattes in a full size palette, like in an eight pan or a 10 pan. I think it would be stunning. And then maybe like some other sparkles, maybe there'd be like a black sparkle or maybe a gray sparkle as opposed to like this bright blue toned silver. Like I think that would be amazing. Like I love this quad on its own. I think I talked about this in my video of palettes that have interesting color stories and it's only a quad, which is why like my brain immediately went to this when I thought of something that I wish was like a bigger palette. I just love this color story. And if this was bigger, this would be the most banging smoky eye palette you've ever seen. I'm cheating a little bit on this next one, okay? So this is one that you love the quality of the shadows, but you hate the packaging, okay? And this is one that I got rid of in my most recent declutter. And I'm gonna put a picture of it up here. This is the Kaleidos Escape Pod Palette. The quality of the shadows is beautiful. They are these bright, vibrant, neon colors. They're so gorgeous, so creamy and opaque and just absolutely lovely, okay? Really beautiful, but, but I would like to say, so this is my Sunset Palette and Waiting Room. The, the uh, Escape Pod Palette was about this thick. So it was like, really thick and really heavy and exceedingly bulky to the point where I didn't want to use it. And I know that might seem like a silly reason, okay? If the shadows are great, it almost shouldn't matter, but it actually did matter to me because as somebody who does have, like I know, again, I don't have a 400 piece eyeshadow palette collection, but I do have a larger collection. I don't want them to be that thick. And it was just heavy and bulky. And it's not like there were shadows on both sides when you opened it up. There was a big mirror and the shadows and it just 
I don't know. I just wasn't into it. And it wound up being one that I eventually decluttered. And the eyeshadows again were beautiful, but those were colors I had in my collection already. Sorry, the cat scared the shit out of me. <laughs> those were colors I already had in my collection. So I didn't need duplicates of them in packaging that I really hated. Hey, guess what? I'm gonna cheat on one more. And it's show us your dream palette made up of singles. I have very few singles, okay? I think I have like six singles and they don't go together at all. Like I have my favorite black in the world, which is, which is Sugar Pill Bulletproof. I also have Sugar Pill Pumpkin Spice. And I have a few others mixed here and there that just, they don't go together at all. I'm not a big fan of singles personally. I love a palette or a quad as opposed to singles. So this is one that doesn't really apply to me. As far as palettes that I like to wear together, this one I had to like stare at my collection for a minute and I was like, are there any palettes that I actually wear together? And then I was like, holy crap, yes, these two obviously. So the first palette is the Shroud Cosmetics and uh, Batty Bean. I don't, I think it says, yeah, Butte Bean, but it's Batty Bean. It's freaking Bats palette, okay? I love this. And the palette that I like to wear with it, can I open this with my elbow? It is also by Shroud and it's the Moonfall palette. I feel like these tones complement each other so well. They're those beautiful like jewel, deep, dark, grungy tones. And I think they look so, so pretty together. Like even just together, like isn't that gorgeous, oh my God. <laughs> but the Moonfall shimmers are really, really foiled and I think that they're such a good complement to this. I just think these two palettes go so well together. I am holding this so awkwardly, like why am I such a freak? Regardless though, freaking love these two together. I think that they are just perfect together. A large palette that you wish was smaller. So this is literally every large palette for me, okay? I don't love large palettes, I just, I just don't, I don't know why. And I know a lot of people love that because you get so many choices within just one palette. But as I get older, I guess, or as I like curate my makeup collection more, I just prefer them to be a little more compact. And when I have a big palette, it almost feels overwhelming rather than inspiring to me. So the main one that I chose is the Michaela and Glam Light Part Two palette. It's still stunning. Stunning. And I think the color story all goes together. So I'm not saying anything necessarily about the color story. I think that these jewel tones really complement each other. But I also love how there are these golds and these whites at the top to just balance things out. I love that there's a dark matte black. But at the same time, I just don't need palettes this big anymore. I would be 100% fine. By the way, this has a 30 shades in it. I would be fine with two 15 pan palettes, absolutely. I do still think it's beautiful and I do still use it. I'm not decluttering it just yet, but yeah, this is just, when a palette is as big as a Trapper Keeper, damn, I just aged myself. When a palette is as big as a Trapper Keeper, it's too big for me. So this one is just definitely one that's too big. This one was also a little difficult for me. So it is an eyeshadow palette you wish had a matching face palette. I'm not a person who uses face palettes often. I prefer to have individual items, like I have bronzers that I like, or highlighter that I like, or blush that I like. But one that came to mind when I was thinking about it is the Urban Decay Naked Honey palette, because I do feel like you could make a fantastic bronzer and highlight palette out of this, where you could accommodate all skin tones. And I just, I don't know, I've always loved this palette. I know that Urban Decay doesn't get much love anymore and I understand that, but this palette specifically is one that I will likely always have in my collection because this color story is so beautiful. And I do think that this would translate beautifully to a face palette. Now that was the end of the original Palette 5000 tag, but my friend Kelly, who goes by K Bella Beauty here on YouTube, did add a few extra questions when she did it, and I'd like to answer those as well. The first one, an OG YouTube palette you still have, and I feel like half the people who answered this would say the same thing. The original OG Urban Decay Naked Palette. I still love this palette. I've talked about this in the past. People have said, oh my God, you don't still use that, do you? Yes, I do. I do, Susan. I definitely just have a bit of nostalgia for this palette. That's for damn sure. This is not the greatest naked palette or the greatest nudes palette that has ever existed at this point. Quality has definitely gone up since this came out, but the frenzy that was out when this came out was just like next level. I remember waiting and dying to get my hands on it and like just going so crazy over it. And I remember it and I loved that feeling. I really did. So 
I do still use some of these, like this shade Buck and Naked. I don't know if you can tell Naked, there's barely anything left. And that's not because it fell out, that's because I've used every last bit of it. And also Half Baked, which is still one of, I think, their most popular colors of all time. I just, I love this palette. I hate the packaging. Some of you might know I really do not enjoy crushed velvet or real velvet. So this makes me want to vomit on the table a little bit, touching it, which is why like I'm barely touching with my fingertips. Nonetheless, this is one I can safely say I will never declutter, even just to have it as just like a memento of, you know, the good old days of YouTube, the good old days of makeup frenzy. As far as a palette that has survived declutters, this is one that I will admit I don't use, and I probably could definitely still use it, but I don't. I really just keep it for like nostalgia purposes, and that's the Kat Von D Beauty. This was not KVD, but the Kat Von D and Divine palette. Namely because I live in Baltimore. I love Baltimore. I love John Waters. I absolutely adore Divine. So when this came out, I was like, holy crap, somebody's like really appreciating. And let me see, these colors are all pretty destroyed. So I'll have to hold it up just like this. You can see this color over here has completely fallen out and the one all the way on the end is about to fall out. But the names of these, Baltimore, Waters, Pink Flamingos, like Female Trouble, I love this palette. I love the color story. And also like this, this is a bit of a sentimental one because I took pictures of this palette and I took pictures of the actual box. I went to visit Divine's grave. If you don't know who Divine is, Divine was a drag queen who was in a ton of John Waters films. The biggest one that you might have seen Divine in was the original Hairspray with Ricky Lake. Uh, Divine played Ricky Lake's mother. So it just, I don't know, it, it, I really love it. But I went to visit Divine's grave, which is not far from where I lived at the time. And I put the box there as sort of like an offering. People like to leave offerings on Divine's grave. So I left the box and uh, Kat Von D herself like messaged me to say how much she loved it. And at the time I liked Kat Von D now, <laughs> now. No, but then I really liked her before I knew she was, you know, the way she is. Uh, but there was that and my picture like was shared everywhere and it went like a little viral for me. So this just, it holds lots of good memories for me. Even if I don't support Kat Von D anymore at all, I do still love this palette and this is gonna stay in my collection. Palette you regret buying. So this one was a little hard for me because the thing is like, I'm weird about the word regret. I don't regret a whole lot. I take things as life lessons and everything like that. And I know that's probably like a privileged viewpoint, but like if something bad happens, like that I messed up, I'm like, okay, well that sucks. But do I regret doing it? A lot of times, no, it's just like, it's a life lesson, right? So this palette, I'm not even gonna say this was a life lesson, but looking back on it, it's one of those things where I can look back on it and say, did I need that? I don't know. I don't know that I needed it. So again, this is definitely not a regret. And I can tell you right now, this palette is going to be in an upcoming video. So stay tuned. But it is the Natasha Denona Yucca Palette. I loved this when I used it. I absolutely loved it. And for that first two weeks that I had this, I used this so often, like almost every day. There's actually already some dents in a few of these shades but I don't think I've used it since then. And that's not like me for a palette, especially one that costs as much as Natasha Denona palettes cost. So again, this is not a regret, but this is one of those where I'm like, I don't think I absolutely needed this, but I know that I loved it. So again, this is gonna be in an upcoming video and I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. So make sure you're subscribed so you can see that video. But yeah, this is one where I can probably say I didn't need to buy it. And finally, a palette that deserves more love. Now, the way that I took this question was not necessarily a palette that deserves more love from me. The Yucca palette would probably be that because I need to use it more. I took this as a palette that maybe is underrated by either the beauty community or people who love makeup in general. When you think about Melt Cosmetics, I feel like everyone, including myself, talks about the Gemini, or maybe even the Gemini 2, or maybe they talk about the 420 and how scandalous it was, or maybe they talk about millennial pinks because they love using all those pink tones. For me, the one that nobody talks about enough is Smoke Sessions. This is one of their best quality palettes that they have, hands down. Now, I think a lot of people might be scared away because out of eight shades, six of them are shimmers intense shimmers at that, foiled shimmers at that. 
So I think maybe some people might be intimidated by it or they think that the color story, maybe they think that the shades are too similar. They're not. These shades are so different from one another. No two are alike. This color, Sour Diesel, is such a freaking good olivey brown green. It's amazing. I love Granddaddy, which is the second one in. These are so beautiful. This is one I wish people were like singing from the mountaintops. And I think they were when it first came out, but then no one talks about it anymore. And I know that that's maybe how it goes with eyeshadow palettes. But at the same time, again, I still hear people freaking out over the Natasha Denona Glam palette. People still freak out over the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette, which was a big piece of shite in my opinion. This is not. I just really genuinely like with all my being love this palette. This is one that took me a long time to buy because it was one of those where I was like, oh, I want it to kind of, you know, add to my Melt Cosmetics collection, but I don't hear that many people talk about it. So that must mean it's not great. No, the quality is amazing next level quality by this one. <laughs> So that's it. I really loved doing this. And again, especially because my collection is a bit more curated than it used to be, it makes me just appreciate everything that I have that much more, which is fantastic on a low buy when you wanna use the good stuff. Use the stuff you already have, that you love, that you bought for a freaking reason. I'm gonna list all these questions in the description box down below as well in case you wanna do this tag or maybe you don't have a YouTube channel or anything like that. Just put your answers in the comments because I would love to know some of your answers, especially like palettes that don't get enough love. Are there any palettes you regret buying? I wanna know if there's a palette that you regret buying. So tell me about all those things in the comments down below. I am dying to know. But that's it. If you like this video, I would love if you'd give it a thumbs up or comment down below. All those things really help out my channel. And again, all of these, if I can find them online, they're going to be linked in the description box in case you want to purchase any of them. Any of them at all. You all can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Those are all Glitter Fallout. And as always and forever, you're super freaking rock stars. I love you so much with